Hey everyone, it is Tom Panos here and um, I thought I'd shoot uh, this very quick video to let you know that uh, there's a number of uh, real estate clients that uh, may be impacted uh, from uh, conferences that I was uh, speaking at. Uh, well, I was the only speaker at it, so um, they're actually not going to go ahead. And uh, those uh, conferences were all being held in Queensland next week. So um, um, there's uh, four in Queensland and one in Melbourne. So there was five conferences, which meant that there was a total of uh, seven flights that uh, I had to take. And uh, I've made the decision that uh, I'm not going to, uh, to travel. Norman, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We have an auction at 4.30. Look forward to seeing you then. Um, but uh, to all the clients, you were notified today. And uh, yes, they are crazy times. And uh, what I'd like to say to you is that uh, I will be holding those events in Queensland and Melbourne in August, in the last week of August. That's already been booked in. I want to let you know that... Um, uh, there are a few issues that I want to talk through about coronavirus and real estate. The first thing I want to let you know is that um, uh, I believe, and I'm going to be releasing to real estate gym members in the next 72 hours, a video on the dialogue to use with vendors and the dialogue to use with buyers. I'm going to repeat that. I'll be releasing a video which is going to be scripts and dialogues working through uncertain times. What's the language you use to buyers that are saying, hey, we're not going to buy, we're concerned about the market? And what do you say to vendors that want to pull out of the market or actually uh, delay putting their home on the market? There's a lot of talk going on at the moment in regards to auctions. Will people stop going to auctions because um, they don't want to be populating where there's other people? Does that mean that auctions are going to uh, lose popularity? Does it mean that vendors at Open for Inspections are going to be reluctant to have people walk into their home thinking that they may actually leave the virus in the property by them visiting the property? There's all these sorts of questions and I'm going to do my best to put together a blueprint template template to, to help you. Um, now, the other thing I want to let you know is let's cut the bullshit out. Masks do not work. I have to tell you that this is coming from someone that has not only done the research, even today, I'd gone in for, I'm not going to go into the details, I go in every two months for, uh, uh, let's call it maintenance health checkups. And that's one of the reasons, by the way, I've, I've decided also, I, I, I just know that uh, I'd not be doing my health a favour because uh, uh, my whilst I'm not like older people, um, I do know that I've got to make sure that my white cell count is at its best. And that's one of the reasons why I actually think to myself, hey, why risk it? But the other thing is, I think that, you know, I have an obligation and that is an obligation not to have hundreds and hundreds of people sitting in a room next to each other while we've got this uncertain time. However, having said that, I still believe right now, if you're a vendor, if you're a vendor right now, I will say to you that you want to take advantage of the buyers that are already there. If you're a buyer right now, you want to take advantage of the fact that um, it's better to buy when there is fear in the market. What do you want to buy? Well, you want to buy when, when there's no fear in the market and there's thousands of buyers around. So if you think about that for a moment, but I'm going to release some scripts and dialogues. Can I just tell you that masks are a waste of time? Got asked this question to a number of people today who are professionals, who are involved in microbiology, and they're basically saying it is irrelevant. Unless, unless of course, you have got symptoms and then you should have a mask because it then may actually serve a purpose. But if you're a person that is paranoid about getting coronavirus, putting a mask on your face and nose and covering it is not recommended. And it's actually been also by a number of the health governing organisations echo those thoughts. The best thing you can do is have one of these. See this? fits into your top pocket. 
See that? Fits into your top pocket. And what you do is maybe 10 times a day, sanitizer. Look at that. All done. Kills germs. 99.9% .9 of germs killed without water. So what do you do? You consistently put this on and what it does is it kills germs and if you accidentally put your face, your hands in your you know, uh, nose, on top of your nose, on your mouth, right, over your eyes, you're not going to have the germs on you. So that's the best thing. Buy a small one. Set yourself up for success. If it's small, it'll sit in your top pocket and you'll cover, have it with you everywhere. That's the most important thing that you can do. And I've got to tell you um, that I'm not taking this thing lightly. And the reason I'm not taking things lightly is I've looked at, you know, estimates of numbers. And uh, I am going to go off and say to you, like, I'm not, I, I definitely don't want to scare people because I still think that life will keep moving on. What you don't want to do is get totally psyched out and not participate in this uh, uh, economy. But what I will say to you is this, to, to business people, anyone that's tuned in here on the, that owns a business, you've got to look at your fixed costs. Look at what the large corporations are doing, whether it's you know uh, Qantas or any of the banks or any uh, service provider, any of the you know ASX top 200 companies. Right now, they're having forecasts of estimating that there will be revenue shortages in the coming months. What that basically means is this. If you can't control your total revenue, at least you can try and control some of your costs. I knew quite some time ago that Qantas was going to be laying off staff because someone close to me uh, eight weeks ago said to me that they were being forced on annual leave and, and, and forced leave without pay. So Qantas already was planning two months ago that they were going to be reducing their costs. Today, another person I know, a bunch of people have all gone from Virgin, pilots that is. Yes, James, Qantas shares are cheap and I'm going to go off as far as saying I think people should consider buying Qantas as a share. We're talking about 10% yields. Not only that, on the recovery, Virgin might not be around or not be as prominent, which is basically going to mean is Qantas is going to have a monopoly. They're going to shoot the prices up. Virgin has already started taking fares out of Tiger, out of some of the routes across Australia. So what you're going to see is Qantas is going to be look, lifting up its yields um, or well, ticketing prices, if you'd like to say that. So guys and girls, that's it. Tomorrow I've got 10, 11 auctions. And by the way, can I just ask you, how is the sound coming through? Because I am using a new mic I just bought. I'm using a new mic I just bought. It's called the Rode Go Mic. And what it does, it's going to allow me to actually... Uh, good sound, thank you so much. Hey, there's Claire. I've got to tell you, Claire's one of the smartest people in real estate and media. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, met up with Claire Starling, follow her up on Facebook and stay connected with her. Um, so guys and girls, um, yeah, by the way, let me just talk about this mic. This mic here. This mic here, $250. It's called the Rode Go mic. And um, I've got to tell you, I can be sitting 10 metres away at an auction and it's going to uh, um, record me nice and clearly. Um, anyway, guys and girls, I'm going to be signing off and uh, take care and please do me a favour. The best thing that you can do, the thing that's going to make me happy right now is go buy one of these and have it in your pocket and pretty much just use it every hour or so. Guys, girls, signing off.